the, it was sort of an attempt initially at sort of forcing a very direct involvement and a direct engagement on the part of social people who uh, make art that sort of falls under or that identify as social practice artists to think about what that actually means, like what, what is social practice, like where does that term come from, where does it sit in art history, where does it sit in social history, what kind of connection does it really have to ethics, things like this. Um, but I think perhaps like because of the uh, the format that we use, the model model UN, like an abstraction of an abstraction of like a really abstract model of con consensus decision making. Um, it kind of like produced the sort of definition of social practice that that makes me a bit uncomfortable, which I can just read to you right now. It's social practice within its specific yet infinitely diverse historical contexts and within its current implementations should offer the rearrangement of all theoretical frameworks, social, economic, and political. Social practice aligns somewhat unwantedly, sometimes unwantedly, with art and social movements throughout history. It nods to theory to legitimize itself. Should it stop reading and start doing? In the spirit of the avant-garde, with the seriousness of activist politics, social practice can serve as a catalyst for a shared future, mobilizing and maintaining human interest in shared time and space. So, I mean, and that's a sort of definition that makes me uncomfortable a bit because it's, it's, a, it's very utopic, it sounds very nice, uh, and then becomes like very difficult to stake a claim against or investigate or even question, you know? Like if I, if I wanted to question that definition, I imagined an immediate, there's a lot of like sort of knee-jerk responses that could go along the lines of, well, you know, how can you argue against seriousness of activist politics? How can you argue, argue against catalyst for a shared future? These, you know, so on and so forth. So, I don't know, in a certain sense, if the intention of the model model of the UN was to produce a real, um, very thought through, serious definition of what social practice art is, it, I think it, it totally failed. But if the point of the model model of the UN was to mirror sort of the, a lot of the sort of like pitfalls of social practice, and then produce a sort of vague, weird definition at the end. Um, I did that quite well. I'm not, a, I'm not against theories or theoretical approaches to um, anything, but I think that something that is occasionally lacking in our field, or at least that I've encountered, is a real engagement with the terms by which social practice identifies itself, like participation, ethics, uh, things like that. Like, I remember, and this is like a specific, this is, I don't know, just like anecdotally, going to open engagement last spring and sitting on, I was like watching someone present something and um, I don't even remember what it, what it was, but I do remember in the question and answer session, someone raised their hand and asked the question, is this ethical? And that's such a that's such a vague, and like the whole room, like kind of everyone went silent, and it was very like dramatic. Um, but like that question, is it ethical? Ethics is like a field of thought that exists separately from our practice, and it's a very complicated field of thought. And asking the question, is it ethical, isn't enough. Like things aren't just ethical. There's multiple realms of what ethics are, um, what they mean, uh, like ethical to whom, ethical for what, ethics in what sense, you know, there's like a whole like, there's a whole universe that's just like totally unexplored, that's just sort of like taken for granted as like something that can be talked about. And I think that's, I think that's a real, a real big problem. And I don't know, I, don't, I think I sort of like geared away from your original question, but for me, 
in a certain sense, it is important to be very concise about what it is one is doing and very direct about it. Um, because often, for me, with things that happen in the social part, in the realm of like social practice art, it's almost more interesting, it's often much more interesting what actually happened than what the artist states is going to happen or what the artist states did happen. Like, if you, let's just like theoretically state, you know, like a typical trope of social practice art would be like the dinner party. So if you had a piece that was a dinner party and it was advertised to like, let's say a certain uh, public, like an arts public as, you know, I'm having this dinner party, but it's an art project. And then people came to your dinner party, not because it was a dinner party, but because it was an art project, but then had sort of like this convivial experience anyway. I think there's something really fascinating about um, using, about people giving themselves the excuse to have a convivial experience because it's art that they might not give themselves an excuse to have otherwise. That's a lot more interesting than making a statement about, um, an abstract statement about conviviality generally. Does that make sense? I don't know. It, it does. I, I think you're, you're talking about the specifics of a project in action. Yeah. And it, examining what they are really rather than through the projected lens mm -hmm. of the desire of the artist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like what, I think it's often much more interesting to consider what is happening in a particular situation, in a particular space, than to try to abstract that situation to a more like transcendent um, zone of like, this is what I'm doing and how it relates to the world of everything and how, it, how it's like making the world a better place or a worse place. Or... So could you give us a concrete example I'm not going to be able to find this, this guy's name, but he's a, it's a Mexican artist, and I can't remember, I think he's from Mexico City. He did a piece that involved where he interacted with uh, men in a jail, a really kind of notorious jail near somewhere in Mexico. I can't remember if it was near Mexico City or not. Um, but the piece, the write up for the piece was, uh, and there was some kind of like very simple exchange, like he went in and said, is there is something that you would, I would, you would like me to do since I can sort of operate in the outside world and you can't? And the inmates would have a sort of like a wide array of things that they might want him to do. And he would go and do them and he would come back and say, okay, so I've done this thing for you and now I would like you to, I don't know, draw me a picture that represents your daily experience or something. And it was, a, I think, what I think is a very rare situation with in social practice where the literature or the write-up around the event was actually exactly the same as the event itself. 